In this lesson, we're going to continue to discuss objects. If you'd like to follow along, go under your File menu to Open, and in the Working Files folder, go to Chapter 4 and select Impossible Objects, and just click Open. Let's start by creating some very unusual text frames. First of all, I wonder if it's possible to change an object into a text frame. Well, there's a couple of ways that I could do that. I can go to my selection tool and just click on this graphic frame with the X through it, and then go under my object menu to content text. So I can change the kind of frame that I have to any other kind of frame right here. But there is a faster way. If I go to my type tool, I can get there very quickly just by hitting my T key on my keyboard. And I go over the top of this selected circle. You can see the icon is changing. It has a pointer with an I beam inside of a circle. If I go outside of the frame, it's the I beam with a pointer inside of a square, which is telling me if I would now click and drag, I could create a new text frame. But the I beam inside of the circle means I'm over the top of some other object. And if I click, it's going to put text into that frame. So it's becoming a text frame when I click. And you can see there is a blinking cursor. And if I go under my type menu, I can go to fill with placeholder text, which will fill it with text. Now, I wonder if it's possible to take a text frame and actually punch a hole through it. I have two text frames here. Let me go to my selection tool, and I'm going to go to the right side and just click and drag across the two text frames. And you can see that, yes, they are text frames. They have an import in both of those frames to the upper left and an outport to the lower right. And also, it looks like there's two columns as well as an inset. Well, how can I make this center square become a hole instead of just another text frame? Well, with both of the objects selected, I can go under my object menu to paths to make compound path. And it made that center text frame into a hole in the text frame that was behind it. And now if I were to double click with my selection tool on top of that frame, it automatically switches to the type tool and I get a blinking cursor. So if I go under my type menu again to fill with placeholder text, it's filling it in with text, yet this is a hole in the middle of the frame. Let's talk about a very unusual text frame. I wonder if it's possible to select the square text frame and rotate the frame without rotating the text, so I'll still be able to read the text. Well, I'm going to go to my direct selection tool. You can hit your A key to get there very quickly. And you'll remember I mentioned the direct selection tool in an earlier lesson. It's a way to select just part of an object. So if I go over this top right anchor point in my text frame, you can see my direct selection tool is changing. When I'm over a point, it gives me a little square to its lower right. And if I click, I'm selecting just that one anchor point. If I hold down my Shift key, I can add to that selection just by holding down Shift and clicking on the next point. Let me go to the next point. Hold down my shift and just click to add that point to my selection. And now go to the upper left anchor point and just click again to select all of my anchor points. Now, if I go to my rotate tool, I can hit my R key to get there very quickly. And I'm going to double click on the rotate tool. And it has some degrees already indicated in here. Those are the last number of degrees that were in there when I last used the rotate tool. So it did rotate just the frame, 
and not the text. You can still read it. And of course, I have a choice of OK, cancel, or copy. I'm going to hit OK. But you can see there's not as much room for the text. So it is overrunning. There is a red plus mark in the outport of the frame. Now we're going to talk more about that in an upcoming lesson. Let me go back to my selection tool. And I'm going to click on this bottom frame. And I remember not too long ago getting an email from one of my students. And they wanted to know, is it possible to have text in a frame that only has three sides? And the answer is yes. A lot of these things, all you have to do is try them to see if they work. Either they are or they're not. In this particular case, when I tried it, I'm going to go to my direct selection tool, the white arrow again, and I'm going to click off of my selected object, go to the right side of the object, and when the cursor changes and I have a line segment to the lower right of my direct selection tool, if I now click, I'm selecting just that one side. Watch what happens if I hit my delete key. I now have a text frame that only has three sides. You can see the stroke can only be applied to the sides that actually exist. There is no line segment on this side, so there's no stroke. Yet, the text is filling the open area. Let me go down to my next page. And we're going to talk about some impossible graphic frames. The first frame, let me just go to my direct selection tool. Once I realized that I could have a text frame with only three sides, I wondered if I could do the same thing with a graphic frame that contains a graphic. Well, I'm in my direct selection tool. I'm going to go over the right side. And when I see that little line segment to the lower right of my direct selection tool icon, if I click, I'm selecting only that one side. And if I delete it, the side goes away. The picture does not fall out. It's still there. Let me click off of everything and now go over the top of the point that's to the lower right and just click to select that individual point and just hit delete. And you can see the picture is still there. It's still filling the open area. As a matter of fact, you can do this very same thing with a text frame. Let me click off of everything again and see if we can really take this further. I'm going to go over that bottom point and click again with my direct selection tool and just hit delete. Believe it or not, the picture is still there, but you just can't see it. I'm going to go to my pen tool. You can hit your P key to get to the pen tool very quickly. And I'm going to go over this right hand anchor point. And when I get a little line segment, if I click, I can now add to this existing line segment. If I go to where this guide crosses my margin and click again, ah, it is still there. And then if I go to the lower left hand corner of my margins, I click again and then go up to my original point. And when I'm closing a path, the pen tool will have a circle to its lower right. And if I click, I've now completed my graphic frame. So I did not lose my picture. It was still there. Let me go to my selection tool and just click on my two fishermen here on the right hand side of the page. And I'm going to go to the scissors tool. I want to see if I can cut an image in half. To get to the scissors tool very quickly, hit your C key. You have to remember the S key is actually reserved for the scale tool. So if you hit C, it will select the scissors tool. And with that tool selected and the object selected, when I get my crosshairs and I'm going to click with my scissors tool, and I made a cut in that graphic frame. Let me go to the other side 
And when I get my crosshairs, I'm going to click again. And I've actually just cut the image in half. I don't know if you can see it, but only the top half of the image is now selected. So I really have two images. Let me show you. I'm going to go to my selection tool. You can see the top half is selected and the bottom isn't. And it is actually two separate frames now. I cut the frame in half, so it's two open frames. And each one of them has the image in it. And just to show you that it really is two images, I'm going to go under my window menu to something called the links panel, which we'll talk about in a later lesson. And I'm going to drag it out of the way. And you can see that image is actually listed twice. So it's two totally separate images in open frames. We're going to continue to discuss objects in the next lesson.